sponsor RX 93.1 presents The Morning Rush. The Morning Rush. The country's favorite morning program on FM radio. Music, laughs, all the hot tea, and the hilarious top 10. Your hosts, Chico, Hazel, Margie, and Rika. The Morning Rush. <laughs> With all the amazing shows on, well, Broadway, I know it's, it's dark at the moment, but do yeah. you have a dream role to play? I don't know now. I mean, in the I got newer, after, newer Broadway shows. After Love It? After Love okay, It? Okay. Uh, in the, as far as the classic ones, it would probably be when I get older. Pa, and by then, I think the quarantine will be over by then. Uh, probably, um, probably the lead in Gypsy. Um, <gasps> yeah, that, that would be one. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, Bobby was kidding about it. It's like you should do it already. I'm like, yeah, wait for another few years. But I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm right for it. Um, so give me a few years, pa. But it's nice, no? It's nice to be able yeah. to say, that, oh, there's a role that I can shoot for in a, in in however many years, which is a nice thing to look forward to. So there's that. Um, there's what else in the new bro as far as the newer shows I'd like to do Persephone in Hades Town. Oh my gosh, that I was about to fun. say that Hades would be fun. Show. It's oh such a gosh. beautiful show. I'm like, yeah, and, and my uh, my daughter and I saw it together. She and I went last year before before it got before it swept all those Tonys. So she's like, Tito Bobby should do it. Tito Bobby should do Hades Town. Really sure. Tito Bobby should do Hades Town, and it's such a it's such a great. It's like a fable on storytelling and how when stories are told over and over again, but you wish that the ending was different. So when you hope in that the next retelling that the story changes, but of course it doesn't. So that's it's heartbreaking and hopeful at the same time. And that company was so incredible when I when I got to see it. And it's nice having friends in shows. Um, so it was it was it was more exciting because there were yeah. a couple of people there that I had that I had worked with previously. That I got to see and got to go. Wee! I got to see them on stage, and it's so much fun. And it's like, you, yeah. you watch that's Eva? me. That's you me at a Broadway Eva? theater. I saw you it now. Eva? I saw it. I saw good. Katie Sound. Eva? Eva. I was so good. I, yeah, Eva was Eva. Yeah. to see, and it's like, oh my god, oh my god, she's so good. She was so oh, I love good this in one. that. It's it's like so the good. ultimate. I don't know. It's it's like the jazz New Orleans. Uh, yes. Era mixed yes. with Greek mythology. It's such a beautiful oh. thing. And it's such not, it's not, it's not a complicated set. I mean, it only gets complicated when it's the whole circling. thing, when, when the whole yeah. elevator comes that goes down. But otherwise, there are so many ways to stage that that will not even require it. I mean, if that show ever goes on tour, obviously they they can't dig into the stage. So it's it's they're gonna have to find other creative ways to execute some of that. Um, some of those, you know, some of that. And then but the music is so good. Anais Mitchell was so amazing, and everyone was. Oh my God! Yes, we should do that show here. That show oh should. Is there? Is that? Is that the, like your same reaction, uh, like the other way around, when you know that friends and family are in the audience and you're performing? Um, I I get excited. I think when when someone that I admire is in the audience, and I find out that they're in the audience, like um. Like a bunch of them are friends now, so the effect is different. Now it's more heartwarming rather than starstruck and petrified. Um, so, like if I find out Bernard Peters is in the audience, it's like it doesn't matter how many times I've met her, it doesn't matter how many times I've seen her, it's Bernard at effing Peters, and I'm going to be starstruck and petrified. <laughs> and if it's, you know, it's there are people just like that. Patty Lapone's another one. It's mm. uh, I don't think I'll ever get over. Patty Lapone being Patty Lapone um, <laughs> because it's because it's Patty Lapone. I mean, come on. you know, it's and, be, and, she, and she doesn't it's mince her words. There. Yeah, she's and very her, opinionated. Just, <laughs> just and she's fun and yeah. N Nicole thinks of her in a different way because Steven Universe is one of the shows my daughter watches, and she's and and Patty Lapone is the voice of Yellow Diamond. So I just have to say, babes, it's yellow diamond. <laughs> and she's like, oh, Patty LuPone! And then that's her reaction. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, she was so good in Hollywood. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was yeah. about to say Hollywood. Uh, she's yeah, so I good really, in it. 
I really, really enjoyed Hollywood. That was a uh, yeah. I mean, working. there's stuff. There's 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 parts of it where it's like ah uh, okay, but there's a lot of it where it's like oh I get it, I get no, it. The it, idealized the idealized vision of 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 Hollywood yeah. and what a lot of us how, want it to be. So now the real Hollywood has to catch up to the fake one. Yeah, it's it's how it it's good. gonna I really have look like, I guess. Um, yeah. And it was, I don't know, I, it was great that they included so many different, you know, things yeah. that they didn't get to include in the 1940s, 1950s. Uh, right. But there was, a, there was an article that came out about American. it also, though. Yeah, there was an article that came out about it regarding also that, that particular Oscars ceremony, the ceremony. Yes. Um, because there were actually, there was actually a movie, um, the, the real one that won, I think it was A Gentleman's Agreement. Um, it, it wasn't going to be Meg um, because Meg didn't actually exist. Exist. Um, but yeah, but there was a movie called Gentleman's Agreement, and there were actually the the article was saying that there were actually films released that year that were also pushing other boundaries. Also, I think it because it was after World War Two, and it was I think pushing things about anti-Semitism. So there's also that. So when I find the link of the article, Mark, I'll send it to you. Again. You can share it with everybody else but it was like oh oh okay so the point of the article was that if you're going to revise history it, you have to be careful what you're revising only because you have to be mindful of other things that might that were also pushing envelopes and we're also pushing boundaries and moving things forward in other ways so those things cannot also be ignored so there's Not that true. so it's yeah so it's it's it was an interesting it was an interesting other view of thinking but yeah as far as you know the acceptance of the lgbt community in, in like 1947 it, and yeah. and you know people of color actually winning oscars that long ago it's an ideal but obviously you know it's 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 something that we can now aspire to yeah the Asian really getting interested <laughs> i really want to watch it now yeah <laughs> and there's a yeah. lot of like that. It. it's just <laughs> oh, the eye candy. I mean, come on. Ooh. I mean, yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say there's a, there's an entire scene where there are disrobed individuals at a yeah, party. Yes, individuals. Yes. At a party. Many, yes. many, <laughs> many disrobed <laughs> individuals at a party. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, like, I'm in now in the theater where, you know, like, Angling El Bimbo, music of the erase of oh. Eraserhead, and then uh, yes. Mamma Mia, music of ABBA. What do you think about a musical based on your catalog? No, I don't think so. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I, I do well. Uh, no, uh, the, the stuff I do wonder <laughs> have already come from very dramatic musicals. So it's like to pull all of that out and put them somewhere else. Uh, no, um, a lot. It's it's it's. I mean, there was, Resort Orchard was also going to come out with also the uh, like with, uh, the hot dog musical, which I was actually really looking forward to. I think it would require the catalog of someone that really put out a lot of original music, and I'm not one of those people. Um, yeah, and I think that's 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 kind of what it would require because it would require reinvention, like Rock of Ages, um, which I think I saw. I, th I think I saw it three times. Yeah, and me it too. Was just so, <laughs> it was just so good. It so was good. so good. Two or three times. Sobra. True. Sobra. But it, I think it would require, yeah, it, it would just require like really creative people to turn that the catalog into something so cohesive. Um, and I don't know that I am one of those people whose catalog would command that kind of um, reinvention. I mean, I don't know. Maybe after I'm dead, somebody will figure it out. But <laughs> I don't know, man. At, at this moment, I love it. One hundred percent real. <laughs> no, but who would you want to? Whose catalog would you like to see as a musical? Maybe even for you to star in. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, I mean, there are so many bands that are still creating music. I mean, Itchy Worms is one band. Uh, the Dawn, I think there was a musical that had that used their music, but it, it wasn't not in the way that El Bimbo turned out to be. Um, River Maya, Bamboo. I mean, oh, yeah. wait, Bamboo the band or Bamboo the solo artist? I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's, 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 you know, but there is, there is a lot. There are artists whose catalogs just, just eventually might be ripe for that kind of reinvention. So, or maybe about, yeah, some artists? of the newer, some of the newer ones like Ben and Ben. Moira, right. also, yeah. they have oh, their, yeah. their songs are all storytelling works of art. Yeah. So yeah. those could definitely go into musicals, I think. Oh, for like, sure, yeah. I mean, like, there's that Alanis Morissette musical, I think, that just opened on Broadway. Jagged Little Pill. Jagged Little Pill. Jagged so, little pill. Yeah, so Ooh, something that'd be like so that. Awesome also. Or like so, the Carol King musical also. Oh, lovely, right? beautiful. So cool. oh, so good. beautiful. I saw it on Broadway and then I also saw it here. And oh, yeah, her catalog was just, it was just so ripe for it. But I think my favorite quote unquote jukebox musical, it might still be Jersey Boys because it, it wasn't just about here's the other song and here's the song that we did, here's the song that it was really like so tightly woven into the storytelling. Um, that it, you know, every song felt like a natural extension of a scene rather than a gratuitous display of this was our song in 19 Kopong Kopong and this is what we're doing and this is how we wrote it and these were, you know, it didn't feel like a showcase of the songs. It felt, it really felt like a musical. It was a real act, absolutely. It was a, an absolutely original execution of, 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 you know, already existing material. It was so well done. And it yeah. was so well done here. It was so good here. It, it told the story. Oh Marky, Marky was not Marky on that. Story. Oh gosh, that Marky. Not, that was not. That was not. I'm like, who the hell? Oh my god! I know who it is, but it's not who I know it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it was transformation. The accent, the posture, the body, everything. It was. It was a complete 180 from what we all normally see. It, oh my it gosh, was, I'm crying. It was incredible. <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> Marky! It's coming from you. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's just coming from your mouth. It just, it makes me so killing. I don't even know what to talk to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was like, sometimes well, he gives us the, like snippets of the accent. <laughs> oh my God, the four of you. Oh my God, that accent. <laughs> And this, this is one of those. Oh my God, Nyoi Volante. That's that was one of those. Oh my God, Nyoi Volante. The, oh my God, Excellent. Nyoi Volante. Oh just my God. Ridiculous. It, he was just ridiculous. He, I mean, <laughs> he is in any show he does. It's he's just. Well, I can't. He's he's he he's he's probably woefully underrated, you know. But he's incredible. He's just incredible. I mean, there's a reason why Bobby keeps hiring him. Um. Because he's just that good. And every, even in rehearsal, he brings something into a rehearsal that's just, you know, and then all of us just jaw on floor. It's, <laughs> he's, he's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. That's how we I feel remember. about you every single time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> One of my favorite moments of Leia was, oh my gosh, Fun Home, where you oh, sat on that oh, yeah. table. And from absolutely nothing, no music, I don't know how you did it, you sang right on key with oh, so yeah, much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was one of those, <laughs> where did you get that note? <laughs> Who has given that note? To her? Bobby like, was No one. Like, I don't know how. He, oh, my God. You are I remember a, my seatmate from a, Fun that Home might have been, when I watched it. That might have been it. the only reason he hired me, because he knows I can <laughs> Like, I remember when it, because to be able to pluck a note out of thin air. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I was crying. Super. Fun when, home. When, fun we home. watched it together, right, Hazel? Or no? No, I watched I think, it with um, Rafi Reyes, and I remember I had a cough, and like the whole show, I was just trying not to cough. I was like, no, <laughs> no, because I was a, you know, it was a very dramatic show, very quiet, a lot of quiet moments. So I was like, okay, hold it in, keep it together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my seatmate actually yeah, shared sounds... like his box of tissues with me and my mom during the box show. Like that, yeah, box. yeah, my box in a tissue. <laughs> As in, I think that that, that could have possibly been his not his first time watching. Because uh, if that's your first time, you're not normally prepared for <laughs> for it. So the fact that he had a box. This was yeah. not his first rodeo. It was, he, he, def 
he had he, he had knows. already seen it before. <laughs> yeah, I mean when the when the people though would clean up the clean the clean the house after each performance, there would be mountains though of Kleenex in oh my. random rows <laughs> because people were just crying. I mean, if when you look at the subject matter, when you when you look at the a description of fun home, it's you you wouldn't think that it would be that kind of a show you know where it it's about family dynamics where it's it's about you know someone who's also you know where where everybody is in their own way suffering in this dysfunctional family unit i think when you when you hear the, the specific description it's like a closeted gay father who keeps having multiple affairs and then there's the, the long suffering wife and the out and proud lesbian um comic book illustrator it's like are people in Manila going to relate to this? And it turns out there were so yes. many people that yes. could relate. You know, the long-suffering wife, the wives, the wives, the wives whose husbands have affairs. I mean, yana, that's all, all, already that's it. It's like, yep, Manila will be able to. Doon pa lang tayo sa gay I mean, married men, marami ng tatamaan. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and the thing is, okay, there is that, but 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 yeah, you, you don't have to be married to a gay man to be able to relate to the mm -hmm. show, to understand that, 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 oh my God, I see myself in this person. Like if you see your, if you were a child of such dysfunction, you will see yourself in Allison and all of the, the, the stuff that she's, going through so i think it hit people in different ways my mom couldn't she couldn't she was there opening night she could not hold still because bobby's instruction to me for the show was you play your mom that's that's it and so i'm like i know exactly what to do um, <laughs> i didn't because know i lived, I lived oh because i because i lived in that sort of dysfunction um i mean it's no secret um so my mom couldn't she could not she could not watch me because I think she knew it, exactly what I was channeling. So for her, it was it was very, very painful. Um, even me thinking about it, it gets me very emotional. Um, but yeah, to sing Days and Days, I'm like, shoot, I have to sickness in front of my mother. How am I going to do this? <laughs> yeah, it was it was hard. It was it was very difficult. Oh, but yeah, such a beautiful show. Wow. That was such a beautiful it's show. Such a beautiful show. Oh. So powerful. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it remained, you know, and I, I hear, I heard, uh, you know, from all the chismes from the Atlantis oh, people, there there's some chismes. people, there's always chismes. No, there, there, there uh, oh, yes, 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 I think I know which one you're leave. talking about. Like some yeah. audience members who tried to leave saying, this is, oh, there you're oh, not. Oh, oh, wait. No, 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 here's, 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 here's what happens. Here's what happens. So after the show. So I normally just escape. I just I just leave. We don't we we're so emotionally drained and spent. So we all just try to get out of the theater as quickly as we can. We just try to escape. Normally a lot of us would do autographs very very happily, but we we were pigang pigana kaming lahat. So it's like you know that we have to go home. We have to go home. I, we can't deal with anything that's too overwhelming at this point. And so when I went into work, I think the next day we got Jorel Balitbit, who's pretty much the madam of Atlantis Productions. Because uh, madaming ginagawa. Yeah. She, <laughs> she was, so she was in the, the office setup, like right near the escalators. And so she's like, oh my God, did you hear about what happened? Like, what? What happened? What happened? There was a family that walked out. I'm like, why? Why would anyone walk out of this? It's not like they don't know what's coming. But like, clearly, there was a family that had no idea what Fun Home was about. When you see oh the gosh. title, it's like Fun Home. I thought it was and fun. <laughs> and you see the artwork. It's like Scrabble tiles. It's like, okay. So, this was fun. So when, when, there's a scene, kasi, there's a scene in it where Allison has her first sexual experience with Joan, her girlfriend. So you see Mickey Bradshaw and Yana Laurel making out on stage. And normally it elicits, you know, laughter and people are feeling a little uncomfortable until they see that, oh my God, I can actually relate 
to this person's the, the first sexual experience of someone while they're away from home in college. But I think a lot of people could relate to it. But but there was a guy and his family stood up, walked out, and of course the office setup was still there. So he this guy that was this padre de familia was shouting in the lobby, there are lesbians on stage. What? what? And then, and then, that, so, and then said, we thought this was a Disney show. I'm like, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> Just because it's called Fun Home, it does not mean it's going to be a Disney show. Uh, okay. So you guys didn't read the description on mm -hmm. the Ticket World you know. website also, there's before the internet. you bought your tickets. <laughs> and, and there's Google, there's YouTube. There, there's going to be description. It, it won yeah. a Tony on it by this time. And it's it's like, oh, come on. It's like, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So in this day in, and in age. My, yeah, in this day and age. And you know, in my head, I'm like, huh, me thinks the lady doth protest too much. So, <laughs> so, there's, so, I, 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 so, yeah, because I mean, if, 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 I, I, I don't know. I, I guess there are people who were just a little, well, not a little. There were people who were very much offended. But this is what, this is what I mean by you know wanting a generation of people to see you know, LGBT as not abnormal, as not wrong. And so with, with, with Bobby Garcia bringing shows in like that, it's, it's, it's showing audiences here that are normally very conservative and, you know, and, and perhaps close-minded that, no, these are human beings and you are going to find something to relate to. And it's going to surprise you just how much more you have in common with, with, with people that you would normally you know, push out to the margins. It's, it's you know, it's it's like this is it's radical to think about it like that. But he wasn't wrong because mm -hmm. if the mountains of tissue paper, in you know, in the rows at, at RCBC are any indication, it's like people really found something that resonated with them, even if at the outset you didn't think that something would. You know what? Yeah. I have to be honest. I think we, we really needed the tissue because I brought my mom to the show and we oh, went through okay. that as a family uh, without the whole marriage thing, but like with my sister and we went through that. And after that, I felt like I could talk to my mom after watching the show about our whole experience as a family, you know, yeah. coming out and everything. So it's, yeah. wow, why do I want to cry? Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but yeah, that was my whole experience. <laughs> yeah. No, there really was one, that. actually, there was a mom and son that went to the theater. And I, th I think it was during days and days that they just both lost it. And then when the lights came back on and the son turned to his mom and said, Mom, you don't have to give away your days anymore. I was like, oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So wow. it was like ah. Oh, so that that got me crying after I heard that, and yeah. I heard that like pretty much after it happened. Yeah, was it, you know, it's, moments like that, yung tissue, eh. it's moments like that <laughs> that you know it it really sticks with you, right? There was a time in Next to Normal when this girl came up to me and said, "Can can you be my real life Henry?" Oh, because okay. So, oh my God, that's another show. Oh my God, that show, that show. Oh my God, I was the, so exhausted after watching Next to Normal. It was because a, her, that's another one. Her mother, her mother, um, had well is is suffering from bipolar disorder, and she saw right. so many things that she related to, and she just came up to me and she just she gave me a hug and she talked to me and told me, you know, um, <clears throat> it's great that that. In the future, I can find someone that I can hang on to, you know. Yeah. It's, and this is what theater does. This is what it does. Yeah. It brings all of this, you know, to to the world, and it makes right. everyone, you know, it, it it gives everyone um, something to believe in. And yeah. You can never take that magic away. It's so. Sure. It's such a magical experience because when 
it's one thing when you're seeing some an experience like that in the movies, but the movies, I said, they feel so far removed because scenery is scenery changes and and the atmosphere changes. But you know, it's it's just it just feels so different and far away from you. But when you see people only a few feet away singing and and, and going through all of this, it, you feel you feel almost like you're pulled into everything and that you're a part of what's happening. And it's, it's almost like everybody's heartbeat in the house kind of synchronizes and, and is, it's, it's just, you know, one unit watching what's happening on stage. It's, it is, it's just magical. It's, it's, it's magical for me to watch. And it's, it's so much fun when I'm the one on stage. It's, it's, it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's an, it's an experience I wish that everybody could feel. Um, yeah. yeah, it's to, to understand. You know, yeah. While we're on the subject of being nervous, I'm sure you're aware that you you kind of make everyone you meet for the first time a little bit nervous. I must admit, <laughs> you know, you have that effect on people. But I'm just super okay. curious. Have you ever felt that way when you met, like I don't know, someone? Have you ever felt that way towards someone else? Like you yes, kind of got Julie Andrews meeting Julie Andrews. Oh my Julie god. Andrews. Wow. I mean, I grew up watching The Sound of Music mm. and just hearing her voice. Um, so I had to do a, a recording of The King and I. Um, right after I left Miss Saigon, so I was flown to Los Angeles to do it. It was with the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra, and Julie Andrews was cast as Anna, and I was Tup Tim. So I actually got to meet her, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is my childhood standing right in front of me and she was she was always so nice always so gracious and always so professional um yeah like she's mary poppins and and mm -hmm. maria she's she's all those <laughs> wonderful characters and beautiful and she just radiates this she just she, yeah it's like there's a light special always following her like <laughs> It's like there's always this light that That's just seems so to follow true. her, where it just gives her a soft glow everywhere she goes. Oh, um, just a lovely, lovely, lovely human being. Um, and then I got to see her a, a couple more times after because she was the host of this Hey Mr. Producer concert in London, which was a tribute to Cameron McIntosh, and I was in the show. Um, so, yeah. And it, there was this this like this this big diva dressing room where there's like six divas all in in one room and if you entered oh, that room wow. it was like it was like brain explosion <laughs> wow. like elaine page and then i think bernadette peters i think julie andrews might have been in that room and and it's it was it was ridiculous it's just one of those ridiculous things yeah just crazy amazing yeah. you know what but yeah um we wish we could keep you forever. I know. I, I was <laughs> just thinking, can we just not end this? Just I know. Sit here, just sit here and forget that, you know, we're, we're radio DJs and just be like, can you just stay forever? But, you know, <laughs> can you just stay <laughs> forever? <laughs> you see my face and like, <laughs> I know. And we're like, can we just add you to our Viber group where we talk about drag race like all the time? You know, right? <laughs> but you know what? This this season, you know, the reason we're doing this is because of this very unusual situation we're in. And you've got a lot of fans yeah. who look up to you. And um, um do you have anything to say uh, to them? I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't know whether it's about uh. Uh, this entire thing, something to look forward to, or, you know, anything that's swimming in your head right now. Do you have a message for all of your fans listening and or watching right oh. now on Facebook Live? Oh, goodness. Um, what can I say? I was like, oh, it's just me now here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I think the only thing that I can say is is it, and I know how difficult it is it's going to be to say this, but yes, we have to all be patient. Still, I mean, yes, many many places in the country are moving towards you know modified ECQ, and hopefully we get to general uh, community quarantine. I mean, this is this is still not a time to be complacent and we all still have to be very careful and very vigilant you know when we go out there you know and not to not to rush to anything 
just to keep ourselves and the people that we are quarantining with safe. Um, I, I personally will probably keep myself in very strict quarantine until I feel it's safe to go back out there. Um, and, but but I know that there are a lot of people that have to uh, for reasons of economics, for reasons that they are essential workers in this crisis. And to all of you, please, please, please continue to be careful. We can't afford to lose any of you. Um, to my fans that are listening to this, it's this is going to be a difficult time. And, and I know that it'll be a very long time before I see any of you in person only because of the nature of my work, which is live entertainment. But, you know, kapit, kap, we just all have to make kapit virtual cop it with one another and we will all <laughs> yeah. weather this yeah we are all gonna weather this um in the meantime uh we find ways to be creative and resourceful and helpful um even to our little corners of the world even if it's just with our families and each of these efforts you know joined together will become something more significant and even if we're we won't feel it, it it actually will make a difference. Um, so let's all find ways to stay sane, whatever that might mean. If it means singing in the shower, even if you're off key, even if that means <laughs> you know maybe that. finding finding time to read something. There are a lot of free resources online where nobody has to spend any money to get to. There are free bookstores and, and YouTube has so much, so much resource now where you get to see some of your favorite shows and artists online without spending a cent. Um, you know, and even if it's just sitting in, you know, if you're quarantining with family, if you get to sit together every day and tell stories to one another, it's it's also a way to stay sane. Prayer and meditation is also another way to do it. Um, yeah, if if you ever if you were ever intending to write or paint or knit or crochet or anything creative with the things you have at your disposal, you have all the time in the world to do it now. Um, and I mean. Filipinos have been touted as some of the most talented and creative uh, people in the world. So we can continue to keep proving that even in quarantine. Um, I mean, I wore a Voltus 5 shirt for a reason today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you to my friend Angela. Yeah, my friend Angela <laughs> supplies me with all of my Voltus 5 t-shirts because the two Love of us it. are both just rabid fans. And yeah. You know, it's it's there's a thing. I mean, it's it's there's a and Voltron is the other is the other one is the other one that I tend to geek out over, um, because it's it's about people having to come together to create something much bigger and much stronger um, than than what they can do individually. So I think it's a good metaphor. I mean, yes, it's Voltes Five. Um, but it, it's a it's a wonderful for any of these robots that have to join together to form something else. Form Voltron. Um, it's it's a it, no. It's 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 a cartoon. It's a kiddie thing, but it's it's a good metaphor. I'm so glad they teach this to children. It's a good metaphor for you know people that are kind of disjointed and separate and divided to come together and create something bigger and more powerful. Yes. Um, totally yeah. So. Yes. So to everyone here at home, let's vault in and let's get out of this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank you to all the frontliners. Oh my thank goodness. you yes. so much to all the frontliners for to everything. all of the essential workers, to everybody even in groceries um, and stores and food service and restaurants and gas stations. And anybody that is considered essential, garbage collectors, most, most definitely. It's not just the medical professionals. Um, everybody who is out there risking their lives, thank you. So that the rest of us may be safe. Wow. So there you thank go. Thank you. you very much for joining us. Thank we can't you. get over this. Uh, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you so hopefully much. not the last. Uh, yes, we'll, we'll oh, I don't think so. To, 
you know, to invite you. <laughs> yeah, Marky is like yes. your, what, your guest relations officer. Yes, Marky is GRO in the morning. Yes. How did you know? Thank you so much. Uh, and please uh, be thank you so much. Please stay Once again. Very welcome. Once again, Bye. we just had Leia Salonga. The Morning Rush. The Morning Rush. The landmark morning radio program on Philippine FM Radio. Winner of multiple KBP Golden Dove Awards for Best Radio Comedy Program. Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Only on Manila's Hottest Monster, RX 93.1.